Good day and welcome to today's web series. I am Reginald Gelo. I'm an application engineer at Product One. Today we're going to be looking at MMX, which stands for Mold Machining Extension. Previously, when you wanted to buy a PTC CAM solution, you could choose one of these options. You could choose prismatic and multi surface uh, milling, which gave you the option to do two axis and three axis milling with the, with the option of four and five axis position milling. Additionally to the prismatic and multi-surface milling, you could buy production machining, which gives you the ability to do tanning and wire EDM. And you could buy complete machining as well if you want to do five axis continuous milling. From Creo 5, PTC has introduced a new extension called MMX. MMX helps you to do high-speed machining tool parts and the benefit of having MMX is that it helps you to reduce your time to market, it helps you to be more efficient, it helps you to be more productive and your tool parts are optimized. So today we're going to be looking at this example of the windscreen of a snow mobile as you can see it on the graphics window let's switch to the mold section so that windscreen was used as a reference to create the core and cavity which will be used to manufacture it let's open the mold you can see inside the mold you've got your core and you've got your cavity what we want to do is we want to show the capability of capabilities of MMX on this cavity. Let's switch to the manufacturing environment. Okay. So you, if you've got one of the fork uh, extensions, so this is how your manufacturing environment is going to look like. On the manufacturing tab here, you can you have this option for a reference model. This is where you can add your model. You can create a workpiece. You can uh, add a fixture if you've created one. And then the work center is where you've got uh, the, mach the machine that you're going to be using. Could be a milling, milton, lathe, or wire EDM. You've got your cutting tools. And this side you've got the manufacturing geometry, which gives you the ability to do uh, boundary conditions. Let's look at the cutting tools. If I want to create a cutting tool, uh, maybe for example, I want to create a ball nose, I can select new and then I can select the ball mill, okay? And then I can specify the diameter that I want and, and other values that I need as well. But what you could do as well is you can create the cutting tool from the part mode, assemble it with your holder and then import that cutting tool here as we have done for all these other tools as you can see this is our cutting tool and this is our holder and we were able to import it into the tool setup what something else that you can do is if you've got the cutting tool you can also create the cutting cut data for that particular tool you can specify your feeds, your, your feed, your speed, your axial depth, and your radial depth. You can specify whether you want it for roughing and for finishing. The benefit of this is when you're creating a tool part, on the parameters, you don't have to always fill these values all the time. You can just import these values, and that will save you some time. Now, let's switch to the tool part section so I'm gonna go to the milling tab so what you can see here is you've got a milling group you've got a high speed uh, uh, milling group and you've got a hole making cycle hole making cycle P previously before MMX was introduced you had the milling group and the hole make hole making cycle now if you buy an MMX extension you're gonna have the high speed um, milling group you're going to have whole make hole making cycles and a few of these tool parts let's first create a face tool part i'm going to select a face i'm going to select the tool part that i want 
I'm going to select a reference in this case. I'm going to select mill window, which is gives us the ability to select our boundary. So now we're going to select one of the boundaries that I have created. And then I can come to my parameters. I can change the feed to the desired values and other parameters that I want to change as well. You can see here that the tool part is showing on your on the graphics window. And if I change a tool part, sorry, I mean, if I change a parameter, the parameter updates on the graphics window. Okay, let's finish this tool part. Then what I can do, I can play that tool part to see how it is cutting. I can also determine the speed, how do I want it to play, whether I want it to be slower or faster. Okay. But you might want to graphically see where it is cutting and which material is left. What you can do, you can select this option, Material Removal Simulation. Okay, and then you can see the stock here. And then we can play the tool part and it graphically shows you where the material is being removed. Okay, let's play the tool part and I've got the ability to select a target. So the target is the final shape of the part, the final shape of your part that you want. And here it shows you that these pink sections are the ones that we still want to remove those materials, okay? Let's exit from here. Then what we can do, let's create some a roughing tool part. We're gonna select the roughing tool. Let's select the reference. Okay, for this case, I'm not gonna uh, make much changes except for leaving my rough stock allowance and my bottom stock allowance, okay? Can end that tool part. We can create a rest roughing tool part. We select the tool that we want and then you can see here that it's referencing a previous tool that we've used. In this case, I'm not going to make any changes to my parameters. And then we can select finishing tool part, select the tool that we want, we can select our reference. Okay, I'm not going to also, I'm not going to make any changes on the parameters. I'm going to finish this tool part. So, let me just show you the advantage of having MMX as compared to uh, prismatic and multi-surface machining. So, here I'm going to create the finishing tool part, which is the finishing tool part for either prismatic multi-surface machining production or complete machining. I'm going to select the same tool that I've used on the high-speed machining finish tool part. I'm going to select the reference. I'm not going to change any parameters. But look at the difference. Let's look at the cutting time, the time it will take to do the finishing tool part. Okay, we can see that it takes us more than 36 minutes to uh, for this finishing tool part to finish. Okay, let's do a comparison. Let's compare that finishing tool part with the high speed machining finishing tool part. Let's look at the time for the high speed machining tool part. Okay, so we can see that the high speed machining finishing tool part takes more than 24 minutes, which is less compared to the previous tool part that we saw earlier. So that means that you can be able to uh, machine a lot of components, so it helps you to be more productive. Something that you can do as well, which can also help you to be more productive, you can take a tool part and save that tool part as a template. 
The benefit of this is you might have a new project and you might want to create the same toolpath on the new project. So instead of spending time to recreate that toolpath, you can import that toolpath. So let's look at an example. Okay, we're gonna import the template that we've created. Notice after we import that template that there are two toolpaths that are created. Let's play those toolpaths. You can see here we've got spot drilling and then after there is drilling as well. Lastly, let's go to our material removal simulation. And if you've got the stock model that you've saved, you can open an in-process stock model and it will show you those previous operations that you've performed on that stock model. Okay, so you can see that uh, this stock model we have performed the finishing operation. So it also shows you the areas where you still need to create other tool parts to finish those sections. The advantage of this is you have an idea of the final shape of your product before you go and machine it. Lastly, I also want to show to tell you that the advantage of also having MMX is all is that once any change, once you change the uh, the part in part mode, those changes propagate here as well. So you don't have to have two different softwares. With one software, any changes that happens on the part mode, it also propagate also in the manufacturing mode. Thank you for watching this web series. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment below. Thank you.